In this video, I want to show you how to use API calls in Flutterflow. Now, to use API calls, you can come down here to this icon over here. And if you don't know what an API call is, it's simply how you get data in and get data out of your app. So if you have another service, it could be Twitter or Gmail, you interact with those services, say getting tweets from or sending an email, you do that with API calls. And we've recently updated our API calls, so I wanna show you some pretty cool stuff. But let's start with the basics. So if you come over here and you just click on the plus sign, we can add an API group or API call. We'll get to groups in a second, but we just want the bare bones one right here. So here we go. And we need a service to use for our API call. And for this one, we're gonna use JSON placeholder. And it's just a fake API that you can use for testing. And so if you scroll down, you can see what resources you have available. So we can grab posts and users. And if you just click on here, we'll actually see the data that we're gonna be getting from this API. So you can just see here, we've got an array of objects and each object is a post that has a body, a title and a user ID. Okay, so that's what we're getting. And the URL that we want is right here. So this placeholder.tipacode.com, and that's just the base one. So we're just gonna grab that. So first we need to give our API call a name. Now this doesn't have to do with any of the sort of technical parameters. So this won't affect the API call. This is just for our reference when we see our all, all our API calls here and when we're building our app. So you want it to something that like makes sense, right? So maybe this one, we will, we will just get our posts right here. And so we'll just call this posts. Next, you have the method type. And you've got five different method types. But to be honest, most of the time, you're going to be using get and post. And these are kind of what you would guess they would be. Get is for getting data most of the time. And post is for posting data, like when you're sending data over to like a database or a service or something like that. Now, this isn't 100% true, so you just wanna check the documentation of the API you're using, and it'll tell you which method types to use. But we're just getting some data, so that's what we're gonna get. Now, our API URL is that what we just got, so we're gonna paste that in. And remember, this is posts, so we wanna get specifically the posts one, so this should be just slash posts, like that. Now that's enough for this API call that we need. So we are gonna go over to our response and test and we're just gonna test it right here. And we can see, there we go. This is the same information. Remember when we actually clicked on that link, we're getting that user, the body, it's just an array of objects and that's it. That's like the simplest thing in the world, right? But let's look at a few more of the additional options that we have. So when you're making an API call, most often you're gonna send along additional information. And the two main ways to send additional information are with headers and query parameters. Now, headers are gonna be things like authorization. So if you need an API key to be able to access it. For JSON placeholder, it's open and anyone can use it. But for many APIs, like the Yelp API that we'll look at in a second, you actually need to get a key. So you sign up for an account and generate a key, but JSON placeholder is open. That's why we can click on these links and we don't need any other additional information. But if you do, and we'll do this in a second, you can add the header here. You can also add other information like what type of data do you want in return? Query parameters is another way to send information. And these will be attached to your API URL. So you'll see it, it'll be added on to this URL when you actually make the call itself. And we can see an example of this with our JSON placeholder. We can see a query parameter down here with this comments root. We have the comments and then we've got this question mark, which is saying that there will be a query parameter after this. And then you have post ID and one. So if we click on this, we can see what we get. All the comments on a certain post that has the ID one. Okay, so let's try this out in Flutterflow. We wanna get this exact thing, so how would we do that? Well, first we're gonna change our route to this comments right here. So instead of posts, we're gonna say comments. And just for good measure, let's keep it clean. 
comments. And then we're gonna add this query parameter and the name is going to be this first thing before the equals and after the question mark. So here it's gonna be post ID, so we'll copy that in. And then the value in our example was one. So we're gonna put that in, one. And of course, you can get this from a variable. So it's from somewhere else in your app. We're just gonna hard code it now for the example and come over to our response and test and we're gonna test this call. And if you can see, we get the same exact thing. We got one, two, three, four, five comments and one, two, three, four, five. The first one is this Elise Gardener and that's what we've got here. And we can see the complete URL right here. We got that JSON placeholder comments and then notice we didn't put in that question mark or the equals because that's part of the construction of the final URL when you have query parameters. Okay, sweet, let's come back to our call definition and see a few other things. Let's get rid of this right now and let's go back to just our posts. And let's test this again. And I wanna show you something pretty cool. So here we've got all of our posts. And if you scroll down, this'll be expanded kind of big so you can scroll down to see these JSON paths. And we've got a whole video on what a JSON path is, but it's just a query language that allows you to filter down this data that you get back. Because often you'll make a call to a server, so you'll get some data back, but you don't want all of it. You just want some of it, like, you know, you'll probably display the titles and you want to display everything and you want an easy way to be able to fil filter through. And you do that through JSON path. But we've added a cool feature here, which is recommended. And this is gonna look at the response, the structure of the data here, and it's gonna make some intelligent guesses as to what are the types of things that you are gonna wanna filter down to. So here are examples of what JSON path looks like. And it's looked over these things and it says, hey, maybe you wanna grab all of the user IDs or the ID, title, or body. And you can see the logic that it's done is that in each of these objects, it's got four key value pairs. And so in each object has that structure. So it's thinking, hey, you probably wanna grab one of those four things, right? But it gets better and smarter too, because these are color coded according to the data type. So if you hover over here, we can see that the type, it's a type of list of integers. That's what that means. And any integers is gonna be this purple. Or down here, we have a list of strings. And all the different data types are gonna have a different color, so you can quickly reference them. Here we can say, is it a list? And it's already recognized that these are, because you're collecting all of them into a list. So you can see here, or let's look at this ID here. Is it a of one, two, three? It's a list. You can click the I right here to see what the data is actually gonna look like, a bigger preview than the actual, that short preview. So we can see it right here. And what that's doing is it's just running the actual filter and showing the complete data. So here we're grabbing the ID, which is these guys right here. And if we see them, we can see that when you run this JSON path query, this is exactly what it's gonna look like. And then if you wanna include any of these things, any of these paths, then you select it right here. And this will be part of the saved call. That is pretty awesome. Okay, let me show you one thing before we get to some more advanced things. And inside this advanced settings, we can see we've got some pretty cool options. So this first one is if you wanna make this private. And what this means is that if you have, if your call needs to be secure, and the most common reason would be if you have credentials, authentication, that is an API key that you don't want exposed, that is users to be able to access it, you want to turn this on because then the API call will be rooted through a cloud function. So what does that actually mean? So when your app is shipped, if this is not on, someone could look at that ship, that compiled code, and could see the API key in there. If this is turned on, then all of that API call, all that logic will be moved into the cloud and you'll get a different URL that will be the actual URL in your app. 
And so you use that URL, it goes to a cloud function and that cloud function will have your credentials there, but it will be sitting on a cloud server and it will be secured so no one can access it. The second cool feature down here is turned on by default. And this is for cores errors or cross origin resource sharing, C-O-R-S. Now, many APIs don't like it and don't allow you to use it if you are client side, that's like on a website. And so here we are on a website, we're on a client. And these APIs are gonna say, hey, listen, you can only get this data. You can only interact with our service if you are a server, not if you're a client. And this is done for security reasons. It's done for rate limiting issues. But if you've ever run into cores errors before, they're really annoying. But this makes it easy to just avoid those altogether. And you use a proxy so that even if you're using it client side and the API doesn't want you to use it, you'll be fine. Okay, sweet. So let's move on to... API groups and this new thing here, variables, which are super helpful and very cool. So we're gonna get rid of this API call. We're gonna delete it. And we are going to make an API group. Now you use an API group when you have multiple endpoints that you're gonna be using that have a same base URL. And for this example, I wanna use the Yelp API. And if you see here, the base URL for the Yelp API is this HTTP blah, 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 API, Yelp, com, v3. And then after here is going to be everything that changes. So if you're doing a business search, then you would have slash businesses slash search. If you were doing a phone search, then it's going to be slash businesses slash search slash phone. But this part is the same. So if you've got an API group, it allows you to set up this base URL and more importantly, set up shared headers. So let's grab this base URL right here and let's dump this in. We're just gonna call this Yelp and here's our base URL. And now we can set up headers and these headers are gonna be shared amongst all of the individual API calls that we put in this API group. And so obviously authentication be one of them. So I've got an API key right here. So I'm gonna grab that. So I've got an API key already and I'm gonna add it in here. And the structure of headers is just like you see here in the example, where you have key value pairs that are separated by a colon and you can check whatever API you're using for the proper structure for whatever headers you need. So the most common authorization is going to be authorization colon and bearer space and then your API key. Okay, great. So these are the things, the base URL and this authorization is gonna be everything that gets inherited by the individual API calls in this group. So let's add our group and boom, we're done. So let's just open this up. We don't have anything yet but let's open it up. And so now we've got a new API call inside here. So what's the first one? Well, let's do that business search first. So it's V3 slash businesses slash search. Awesome. So we already get a business search here. So well, we're just gonna call this business search. Let's put a space, make it pretty. Awesome. And let's add that in there. Yes, it's a get. Now we don't see it here, but we're inheriting that authorization header right there. So that's good. And cool, let's go over to our response and test. So we're testing our call and we get an error. What's the error? It says validation error and we get a nice description because this is a well done API. So we get good error handling and it says, please specify a location or a latitude and longitude. Okay, that's super helpful, right? because we set this up, but it's telling us, hey, you wanna search for a business, you didn't actually enter a business in. This is the proper endpoint, but you didn't say what you actually wanted to search. You got a search box with nothing in the search box. Okay, so let's add this in, but how do we add it? Well, remember, there's two main ways to send additional information in our API call that we talked about headers and query parameters. And how you know that is to go look at the documentation of the API. Okay, so let's go back here and we can see here the parameters, right? That's our query parameters. That's the same thing. Okay, cool. So we look in here and normally it's gonna tell us whether they're optional or 
required. So down here, we can see that we can search for a location. That's the name of it. Okay, great. And the description is going to be, it says it's required if either latitude or longitude is not provided. And we've got some examples. So like New York City or NYC or a full address. So this is a pretty forgiving property here, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's grab this location. I'm copying that sucker, coming over to our query parameters. I'm adding in a query parameter. I'm going to say location, and let's search for Chicago, because that's where I live. Let's go over to our response and test, and test it again, and sweet. We get this great response, status 200, beautiful. And we get an object with a business properties that's an array of objects. Presumably, this is a bunch of different restaurants. Girl, the famous girl and the goat. And if we scroll down, we'll probably see another restaurant. Yes, we do. Wild Pancakes. Whoa, Wild Pancakes and Cafe. That's awesome. And so we get a bunch of restaurants down there. And once again, if we come down here, we see all of these beautiful recommended Jason paths. Oh, look at that. Lovely. Okay. But, and here's where it gets very cool. We don't want to hard code in Chicago to this API call because we're probably using this as a service to be like, hey, search for your own. You know, like maybe we have, this is a conference app that people can use and they say where are your conferences you can search for restaurants there you know so we don't want to hard code this in but we want it from a variable and what variable do we want well let's create a new one so we could create it here or we could create it and that's what this variables field is for so let's just add a variable here so we can see it come in and we can just call it location now remember, this is not going in our string or anything right now. This is just an abstract sitting in flutter flow variable. So we're just calling it location. So this doesn't correspond to anything. This is just however we want to name it. The type is we don't have it set, but let's set it to string because it's always better to have a type and we're not going to have any default value. Okay, so then let's come back to our query parameters. We're going to say from variable, yes. And now we can see that location variable right there. All right, sweet. Now let's go to our response and test. Let's test our API call. Oh, we could not execute the search. Try to specify a more exact location. That is to say, we called it without a location. That's because we got to put it in. But now right here, we see our variables. And if we click into our variables, we can set a location. Now let's do a new one. Let's say Miami. And we, that's just saying we're including it in this test call right here. So let's test it. And now we get a list of restaurants in Miami. This one right here that I cannot pronounce. Okay, so that's sweet. But you can also reference variables, not just in query parameters, but in the URL string itself. So maybe you have an API that you want variable data, say in the middle of this URL string. You can reference a variable in here, and you just do that by putting it in square brackets. So once you define the variable down here, you can reference it up here. So I can just go location, and that would reference it. But I can also add that into the middle of the string. So I could maybe I could search location and something on the end here, food or something, and it'll render that as whatever the variable is, and you can reference that in your app. So that's how to use API calls in Flutterflow. If you have any questions, please leave them below, and we'll see you in the next video.